said hello everyone and what is uh after we do this one what is the next video you said you wanted to release you found a I found audio of an entire interview between James and Cage okay so which I'm going to listen to the one that he put out next to this one and see and see just how much he really leaves out okay and well, I have that because we convinced James that I was in North Carolina at the time and I was just on the other side of the phone actually with Gia and Shasta on the line so when James called Shasta and said oh by the way Cage said this this and this she said uh no I didn't you're a fucking liar because I listened to the call okay and we already talked in depth about episode 29 and put that information out so now we're going to skip back to episode 28 29's the Yep, that's your arrest video. Oh yeah, that's already up. So. Yep. So we're gonna we're gonna skip twenty nine. We're gonna do twenty eight in the uh, about the presumptive classification. So here we go. Hey guys. Last week was episode two of the case file. I want to go over the most important takeaways from that episode before we move on to today's topics. Last week, we heard Ashley explain to law enforcement that Brittany sent her a message about two grams and fifty dollars. This Facebook message takes place no, on November twenty eighth. Stop two that. Okay. She never sent me anything about two grams and fifty dollars. That is them making assumptions because they don't know what the fuck they're reading. Twenty isn't two grams, it's twenty dollars. I have twenty dollars. I don't have anything. Well I have fifty. Fifty dollars. I still don't have anything. These people are fucking idiots. I didn't just fuck. Push play. Days before Brittany disappears. Ashley said she doesn't feel that this message was Brittany. And no, the very last message between Brittany and I is not Brittany, and I've said that. I said that to the cops. Those last messages were not Brittany. How do you know that? Because of what was said. She said, I got 50. Yeah. I said, I got nothing but bad luck. If that were my friend, she would not have upped the ante. She would have said, talk to me. I'm confused. What would she ask you about? She went on to say that Eric got strange messages too. When I told Eric about it, he got some weird messages too that he said were not from Brittany either. We'd like to see those messages she sent you, Eric. What was so strange about them? Might it have anything to do with some revengeful bullshit? I told you about my conversation with Ben. Ben is the family friend of the teen who was home alone. Ben confirmed for us that the interior of Sheldon's car was torn apart before law enforcement arrived. He said the glove box was open and there was stuff everywhere. We initially thought law enforcement may have done this when looking for something to identify the owner of the vehicle. Ben's statement was helpful in clearing that up. Ben leaves the car after calling law enforcement and drives the area looking for someone who may need help. He never sees anyone on any of the roads in the area. He's driving and aware that there's a woman walking around in need of help. He travels all the surrounding roads where Brittany would have ran off to. We explained in the last episode that Ben travels in the direction that would form the letter P. His travels would have covered all the roads that Brittany would have used to get back to Grandma's. We went over the statement from the teen who told law enforcement that he heard a knock on the front door, then sees Brittany make her way around the house from the deck in the back. Once Brittany made it to the front of the house, she peers in a window and sees the young man. They make eye contact. And before he knows it, she's gone. The question we're wrestling with the most is did Brittany know that the mystery man was at the front of the house knocking? If she did hear knocking, would she know the noise was coming from outside? One of the most impactful testimonies we heard last week was from Ashley's friend, Larry. Larry messaged Ashley. Ex-friend. 
after the episode aired. His opening line. What did you do, Ashley? His closing line. All I'm saying, Ashley, is if you have any hand in anything that dealt with Brittany, you need to help anyway. Turn yourself in. Help solve it. And stop fighting it. What transpires in between those two messages, you can hear for yourself. Given the way you worded that, you're just like everyone else. So I'll answer your question and leave it at that. I'm not discussing shit with anyone blaming me for anything. What did I do? I should read it since they're reading the same thing. Mm hmm. So they can hear exactly how it really was said. <coughs> you have that ready? So a quick question for you, um, where he was saying the 50. So he, he played a clip of your voice talking about the 50, but then you knew it wasn't her on the other end. So I think what he's asking is, what was that 50 about? He who? $50. He who? James, he's, he's asking the question, what was that 50? I just said. Said, I got, she said, I got right. 50, right? First she said, I got 20. Okay. And then I got 20 bucks. Yeah. Buy some shit. And I told her I don't have anything. So she came back with, well, I got 50. Like I got more money, so will you sell me something now? Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, no, because I don't that, have anything. That was a good statement to clear up, I feel. Well, yeah, because these idiots are like, ooh, two is like 2.2 2 grams, and yeah. oh, God, they're, they're dumb. So, all right, so <laughs> she came back at with, I have 20, then I have 50, hoping that you would change. Which saying, she's yes, never I have done. some. That's why I say it's not her. She's never, ever, when I tell her I don't have anything, I don't Then have you had some problems, and then she went up the problem where she wouldn't know she would ask what's wrong. Correct. Okay. We're going to continue on. We'll just have to listen to Sarah Jo. I told the truth. I told the truth about what I knew up to that point in hopes of solving the mystery of my missing friend. There was no way for me to know he was a shitball who would crop and edit everything I said, in addition to running around behind the scenes with Britt's mom, lying to this person and that person to create more drama for his show. Also, no way for me to predict that he would make shit up and throw that in there too. Nothing I've said will change because I haven't lied yet. Just because that fuck says I lied about something doesn't mean I really did. Do you, you never really say because I haven't lied yet. You just say I because I don't lie. I hear you say that one all the time. I don't right. lie. She, Sarah Jo said I don't lie yet. Oh, I did probably you catch said that. that. What's that? I probably did say that. You did, okay. And then I haven't lied yet, and I don't fucking plan to because why start? Oh, okay. I haven't listened to the podcast, and I don't intend to. I can tell you, though, that not one thing that I've heard so far has been true. Also, to anyone crying to me about having something said about shit they did back then, I just don't care. You're all a blip in the grand annihilation of me. So not even sure what you're all upset about. Your lives aren't being ruined. Mine is. Because I wanted my friend found. Because I wanted the corruption brought to light. I'm such an evil human. Get the fuck out of here. I'm not understanding how or why my name was even put into all of this. I never did anything. And hell, we both know when I got out of jail is when I found out about this. And then I went back to jail before I could even bond out. I had to talk to the investigator and they went right back to jail that Monday. I mean, fuck. Because I simply told him about the day in my room when we found that post of Daniel's. That's not what this is about. I don't want a flashback. I don't remember the post. And I don't want to. I'm just over all this shit. I said I had Larry message Cage. Well, who's Larry? My best friend. Well, my used-to-be best friend. 
I had no way of knowing he is what he is or he was going to do what he's doing. You're over it? (laughs) That's cute. Like I said, you're a blip. No one even gives a shit about you. My life is fucked and has been. That's why I got away from you. And the stuff that you were putting yourself into. Hell, I told you, you're falling. And after that... That's not what happened, by the way. After that, you lost your kids, lost your house, and all these new people. No, that's not that's not how it happened, but go ahead. Do you have something you want to correct on this? No, Larry's just fucking... Lost your kids, you lost your house, you had all these new people in this Britney stuff. I was gone a couple weeks and came back to all of this. That's why I told everyone. I don't want any of this he said, she said shit. I don't want to hear it. Read it. Listen to it. Because I want no part in any of it. And yet, because you were my friend, I still got brought up. When I wasn't even around. It sickens me. He was around, so around like the day. I didn't want to know any of the information or... St- he was around until Valentine's Day. He's the one that came and rescued me from Glides on the 23rd. He's the one that took me to get my car out of Impound on the 23rd, 24th, 26th. And this conversation is before all that? No, this conversation that we're reading is uh, when we went to Walmart that day. When Larry messaged me. It's you December and I 17th, went to Walmart? December 17th of this year. Oh, of this year. So this is a this year conversation? Yeah, this was just uh, like a month ago. So it's not even relevant? No. Worries about what happened. And I've kept it that way. All I'm saying, Ashley, is if you have any hand in anything that dealt with Brittany, you need to help anyway. Turn yourself in. Help solve it. And stop fighting it. Wow. wow. Fuck off, dude. You are officially dead to me with that last statement. I've been going through hell and still am trying to solve this. I've been the only one willing to put myself out there and put it all on the line to solve this, while everyone else hides behind lies and bullshit. Don't ever speak to me again. Congratulations, Sarah. You actually did decent on that one. But oh my God, like, so from Valentine's Day 2019, so when I took you to Walmart, you haven't heard from Larry. He hasn't been in your life. You don't no, know. No, we've talked. We've talked. talked. Yeah. So and why it's three years? Like this. But three years later, he's texting you this message stuff. You know, this December, telling you to turn yourself in. Like yeah, that's why I said fuck off. You're dead. I figured it was James again. So if you look at our fucking previous conversations, yeah, it's nothing like that. Love you, Larry. <laughs> so, well, and Larry was the one also that was going to give you a ride, needed help getting into his truck that one night too, right? Was that was that a Larry? Did he have the black truck that had the two batteries? And no, when you totally a different Rob? person. No, different person. Okay. This Larry lives in Florida. All right. The Larry that's on this, he, he lives in Florida. So. I just don't understand, like, how all of a sudden Larry's telling you to turn yourself in three years later when he was around during that whole time in the beginning and you guys have talked and then all of a sudden he's switching tunes up and everything. Either got paid or had his account taken over. Just like Sheldon. I haven't hit behind lies or bullshit. I won't message you ever again. Whoa, whoa, pause. That? I can promise you. This shit here is made the fuck up. Yeah, that's not on your phone? No, because I blocked him as soon as I was done talking, which means I have not received a single message. Okay. Because when you block someone, you don't. You can't them text them. Yep. It says you cannot respond to this conversation. So let me pull that shit up real quick so I can show you that he's making shit up. You can put it right up here. Can you see it? Yep, block. No message ever received after that. He 
was obviously upset that someone he used to feel very close to, and trusted, would insinuate in any way that he had anything to do with Brittany's disappearance. She was very upset that someone she was very close to and trusted would insinuate that she had anything to do with Brittany's disappearance. Larry went straight to the source. He pulled no punches and gave out no passes. Larry seemed genuinely upset that his name was thrown out there by Ashley as someone who fit the description of mystery man. I didn't throw his name out there. The police asked me specifically about him. I answered their question. I didn't say he looked like the mystery man. Y'all did. Fuck off. Next. Larry strikes back with a strong alibi. He says he believes he was incarcerated when Brittany disappeared. After three attempts to verify, we were able to confirm that Larry was incarcerated at the time Brittany disappeared. Sarah and I go back to the suspect board and pull Larry's picture off and put him into the ever-growing pile of names Ashley's thrown into the wind to confuse things. I didn't throw anything in the wind to confuse things, you ass clown. Okay, you wait, did wait, wait. that. So they're saying he was in prison and they could verify it, right? Not prison. It would have been county jail. Oh, he. so he could have been in county jail? Do you, do you know any facts here that you can use? Um, what's Larry... Uh, I'm going to pause this to check this real quick. Alright, so... The 30th. But he helped get your car out of your impound three weeks later. So, he, he could have been... Yeah. I'm, I'll have to go through all of our messages on all his different profiles and see if I can find anything. Okay. But quite possibly he that is that is true. It could be. I'm not gonna say okay. it's not, but I know he wasn't in jail. Oh, when was it? When he went three weeks later when you got your car out of impound and all that after the arrest video. During on the twenty third. He's the one that brought me back to the apartment. Yeah. So that one I know for sure. Alright. We'll stick with that for now. Alright. I'm curious though, why his name would even be thrown out there to begin with? Because you put it out there! You knew there. the guy you called your brother was incarcerated. Larry demonstrated how easy it can be to clear shit up when you know you have nothing to keep hidden. We're looking to find justice for Brittany. Not every bed had a monster under it. Thanks, Larry. No hard feelings. Ashley. You yeah. said Brittany contacted you on November 30th. She said, how are you doing? In regards to Pocket being arrested the day before. The day Brittany disappeared, you don't remember that for eight months? You shared with law enforcement that Brittany contacted you via Facebook. But then me, it was text message. Which one is it? It's both, you fuck. Are you questioning those messages being from Brittany? See, this is just like really reaching with all sorts of speculative, presumptive. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, I didn't remember because those text messages between her and I, there was nothing about the 30th that was traumatic enough for me to have to remember it because I didn't know yet that she was missing. When I met you, you said you talked to James and you told him you couldn't remember one date or another. Yep, that was the 27th versus 23rd for the last day I saw her. Yeah. And I told him, for the sake of moving forward with the interview, mm -hmm. I'm just going to stick with one. I picked the 27th. And then I said, we need to check the messages between Brittany and I with time stamps, time stamp, whatever. Which I did when we were done. And it was the 23rd, not the 27th. No. He did not do that. And he chose to air it as I said the 27th. People are theorizing the 27th, three days before she disappeared. Ashley lied. This, this, no, Ashley did not fucking lie. Yeah. So I think that's a big one to let you clear up right 23rd. now. 23rd. The 23rd was the last time I saw her. Not the 27th. And I told James that. Even if I didn't tell James that, he had the copy of the messages too, which had the timestamp. 
In today's episode, we're going to wrap up the case file. We have four more interviews to break down. But first, I want to share with you guys all the search and rescue missions that were performed by St. Joe County and Michigan State Police. I'd also like to say thank you for those who stuck with us through the last two episodes. The case file was a lot to work through and digest. And none of it pointed to me. Thanks again. Okay, Sarah, we are on the third episode of going over the case file. We're going to start with searches that were conducted. How quickly did they get started on looking for her? Why don't you take us through the timeline of the searches and what was done? The very next day after Brittany is reported missing, they begin searching. So on 12-9, there is a search conducted of John's property and the surrounding area. Everybody, I think, remembers that John is the home that Brittany goes to and calls 911. The next search searches are done on 12-12 and 12-13. Now, these are the first foot searches. Officers spend several hours over these two days searching fields, tree lines, ditches, roadsides, wooded areas, and abandoned properties. One of the officer notes that he keeps an eye out for buzzards, crows, that sort of thing, and he sees no sign. He also keeps an eye out for clothing that would match the clothing that Brittany was last wearing, and he doesn't see any sign of that either. The next search occurs on January 2nd, 2019. One deputy, and he's searching abandoned property. On January 8th, there's a search done of a specific road by two deputies. March 21st, 2019, this is when Michigan State Police enter the scene. They bring five canine teams to conduct searches around the crash scene, that area. 3-26-19, five days later, Michigan State Police are back out searching again, and this time they are doing an aerial search. They also have canine search teams that are out at the same time, and they cover uh, an area approximately four square miles. On April 27th, St. Joseph County Dive Team is out, and they cover a few bodies of water in different locations around the crash scene. July 8th, 2019, detectives search another small body of water. 7 26, 2019, an abandoned property searched. On July 30th, 2019, another private residence searched. 10 21, the dive team is back out, and this time they search two bodies of water. 11 26, 2019, Michigan State Police K-9 is out and they are conducting two searches of two pretty large areas just north of the crash scene. March 21st, 2020, there is an aerial search of Fawn River Road and the area around the crash site. They actually cover quite a bit of, of area in this search. On 6-18-2020, there is several locations searched this day by Air National Guard. March 1st, 2022, as most of you listeners know, this is the first search that we initiate at the former property of Don Hill. On March 20th, 22, there's a search by the Bronson PD at a private residence. 412. This is the third search that we initiate at the former property of Don Hill. This day, there's also a cadaver dog search of a abandoned property. To give you some idea of the work that St. Joseph County has put in, there are a total of 19 search warrants executed, 25 locations searched, 135 individuals interviewed, some of them multiple times, 201 tips. These are the numbers just as of April of 2022. Record says 135 individuals searched, but James and I have 
you know, counted and we think there's far more than 135 individuals. This case got very messy very early on with how many people that were brought into law enforcement's investigation. You got to give credit where credit's due. When you look at those numbers and you see the number of locations searched, the number of warrants issued and executed, number of tips that they have to follow up on, that's man hours. It takes time. The response time, though. I was pleasantly surprised to see that, you know, she's reported missing on the 8th and the 9th. They're already out there. They are, they're searching. They took it seriously. They began doing their job. They took it so seriously that when her flyer went out, it was, I want to say like the day after, when Eric told me the new description of Mystery Man, and I said, oh my God, it sounds like Jeffrey. He said, send Jeffrey's picture to Balk. So I had texted Balk, and I said, I got some information on the missing woman. I'm pretty sure you already have it, but he said, can I call you? I said, sure. He called, and he said, what are you talking about? He didn't even know there was a missing person, even though his signature was on the flyer. I said, uh, her flyer went out last night. You got a signature on it. And he said, let me call you back. I need to call the department to find out what my guys are up to. That's how seriously they took it. The okay. sheriff didn't even know. There is um, one thing that I've heard out there there's a lot of questions on is your relationship to Balk. There is no relationship and how there. how you had, um, you know, they, people want to know how you have his phone number. He is because an in-law. Right? No. No? I thought he was. Like, growing up, I thought he was, like, an uncle or some shit. Okay. Because he would stop by and see my mom, like, my aunt's balk, like, married in the family somewhere. They were close friends in school. I was little. I thought he was family. Okay. I've only used his phone number, his personal number, three times my whole life. Once was when I was getting arrested, and then when I... Called him on the flyer? Well, it wasn't about the flyer, it was for Jeffrey. Okay. We talked about the flyer. And then when my husband didn't get arrested when he should have, but my car went to impound. Okay. Nothing to do with nothing. But that was so, in 2018, too. That was that's husband. another one that has a lot of stuff circulating I think you should clear up. So. Yeah. And go. idiots talking that we had sex. <laughs> that's disgusting. <laughs> All right. Sarah and I discussed how we wanted to deliver information regarding searches. We agreed that we wanted to share it, but we also agreed to keep it vague. There are certain pieces of information in the case file that we've determined are better left unsaid. Not my address, In no though. way do we want to compromise the work done by St. Joseph County and Michigan State Police. And this is one of those instances. Searching is an extremely important piece to any missing person case. And our goal in sharing the parts of the search information we did is so that everyone can gain a better understanding of the work put into Brittany's case. We hope everyone can understand this. Porter hits my radar in July of 2021. Ashley sends me a website link and writes, so, I was actually going to talk to Porter about all of this. To the big story tonight, three Elkhart men are under arrest for their roles in the torture and murder of a Columbia City woman. Okay, so we know this is going to be a whole long thing and everybody's already heard the whole Porter thing. Is there anything... You sent a link. At one time you thought, oh, could this be connected? Would no. it happen real time type of thing? Or no. I sent him a link to the to this shit, mm -hmm. letting him know what I was going to talk to Porter about. Like Porter's a fuck stick, but he's dangerous too. Mm -hmm. Like he was actually involved in murdering someone. Yeah. He came to town to meet me to kill me. You knew Porter. Not yet. Not yet. I had just, I was going to go talk to him. Okay. And the first time we actually really sat down and talked talk was the time that he came to town to kill me. Hmm. 
I'm like, fuck this. I'm going to set this shit straight or I'm going to die. <laughs> okay. Now we begin in Columbia City where the torture and murder of a burned, even mutilated. He's now believed by that time she was old. Dinsky is charged with... are also charged with robbery and confinement. And April this mess because he was selling marijuana were arrested in the connection to the murder of a young woman named Kimberly Dyer. They were charged with murder and level three criminal confinement resulting in serious bodily injury. Porter says he got involved in this mess because he was selling marijuana. He says he's connected with three people, including that. Found out that Porter ties in with Glide. So if Porter knew Glide. If they say they did, then it's ties full in. Of shit because. Ooh, I don't know if I should get into all those names down there in Elkhart. Yeah, but let's... they, the ones that are involved in Elkhart shit, are living in one of Glide's boss's houses for free. We'll um, get to that at a later date when we get into our other stuff. The car theft ring that was just busted. Yeah. Fire via Facebook. They met up in Michigan and eventually all end up back at a house in Elkhart where they hung out and partied. Porter says he witnessed them beating, burning, waterboarding, and forcing Kimberly to consume bleach before she was murdered at the Elkhart home. Stated that Porter knew what happened. Sought to limit Angulo's cross examination of Porter at trial. More particularly, the state asserted that based upon questions Angulo's counsel had asked Porter during a deposition. So this is this is where somebody brought Brittany Shank's name into things and they couldn't do anything in the court to cross-examine them or something like that. And that's been well documented already. I know I, I wanna I wanna keep this a little bit shorter than an hour and a half, so I wanna stick to stuff that's relevant. So we're gonna we're gonna be fast forwarding through some of this stuff. And about a missing person's irrelevant, and it. It's Ashley. That's me. I must have hit on something close, cause shit just ramped up in a way I never saw coming. I never would have seen it coming, not in a million years. Me and Porter don't have beef. Never have ever. He helped. He helped kill Kimberly. He participated, and he's walking free. The Kings are responsible for her death, and now he's looking for me, telling people she's dead because of me. Given the fact that Ashley continues to message me into October about her interactions with Porter, and the reference to Brittany's case and the Kimberly Dyer case documents, felt it was time to reach out to Porter. Pause. At Port. All right, this is where he's just being a giant fuckstick because I wasn't messaging him about Porter in connection with Brittany. I was messaging him because he made me believe that he was a friend, like a genuine friend. Mm -hmm. And I had this shit unfolding in my life that was kind of scary. And I was messaging my friend about the shit unfolding in my life. Mm -hmm. Nothing to do with Brittany. Connection there. Fuckstick request his voice has been altered thank you for using securus you may start the conversation now hello now this is stupid i gotta have my voice altered but i'm calling for freaking prison and james just said who i was right <laughs> I'm sorry. I have to. You're going to alter your voice. You have to alter your identity, too. She did mention that you're familiar with what's going on and what we're doing or what I'm trying to do. Is that right? For Brittany's case? All I know is I don't really know much about it. Like, just know that you guys you have a podcast. That's about it. Let me start with this. I know I'm pretty familiar, or at least I've read, about what happened previously with the with the Dyer case, and that's not necessarily why I'm here, why I want to go over all that stuff. But I wanted to kind of chat with you briefly about Brittany Shank, or also known as Brittany Wallace. Are you familiar with her case and what happened? Oh, I just know she came up missing. I know that. I really don't know what really 
really happen. You know, I try to not follow that kind of stuff. Did you ever meet Brittany? No. Oh, well, I, I, I think I did one time when she was dating uh, uh, Daniel. I know that for like a brief minute. Yeah, I didn't know who she was. I had her on my Facebook too, but I met her there. Cage is with her and he brings her there. That's where you meet her for the first time? Yeah, and they did. Then they just like, they didn't they believe it. So it was just, he, he popped in, said that he was in town, and then they left. Do you remember what year this is? <laughs> no, not really. It was, it was a while ago. Uh, I guess it would be 17. Yes, sir. And that was the only time you met her? Yeah. Really? We, we, we weren't even, even induced, like, you know, this is Robert, this is Brady. I was even introduced like that. He just showed up to somebody. And then you never interacted with her after that, though? No, no, I never even interacted with her, really. He just showed up. He just said, hey, I'm in town, Rich. Let's go get some juice later. They were there, and then he left. Yeah, but that's the only time I've ever laid eyes on her or ever. What about the Facebook friend? The what? Come here. You mentioned that you guys are Facebook friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just had, I just had, a, I don't know if she had me or I had her. When that, when this, uh, the whole case about uh, Kimberly or whatever, they said, oh, you must know who she is or something like that. Like, not really, but you have her on Facebook. It's like, sometimes you don't really know who you have on Facebook. You just add a bunch of people and somebody asks you, sends you a question, you don't know, like, you can have like 500 friends, you don't know every single one of them personally, you know what I mean? Yeah, I can believe. Yeah, I can believe that. I mean, I know that sometimes some people are pretty private with their stuff, and there's some people who allow friend requests to kind of come and go. So they actually came to you and said, "Hey, you were friends with her on Facebook." Yeah, which one I was like, okay. Yeah, I was like, what? What are you trying to do? What are you trying to say here? Like, you trying to like? I don't know. It was kind of weird. Even the prosecutors like, I don't even know why they even brought that up. I think it's a fair question to ask because this girl goes missing. You're involved with the Kimberly Dyer situation. We're yeah, trying to connect yeah. any dot that there is. Right. So wanting to know if there's any connection. I mean, this wouldn't be the first, nor will it be the last case where they try to not pin things on people, right. but they're going to cross-reference relationships and see if there's any connection to this person who's disappeared. Yeah, I understand the cops do that, but not a, but not a, but not a lawyer. You know what I mean? I understand that. But now, that's what I'm trying to say. A lawyer said that to me. If you think back in 2021, October 2021, what was going on in your life during that time? Were you, did you just gotten released? Or were you out for a while already? Oh no, let's see, 21, uh, might have been, I don't know. No, I was around Sturgis, I know that. But not like, I don't know. I was, I was back and forth from Alexander Sturgis a lot. Well, there's a girl by the name of Ashley Marie. Oh, yeah. So I want to talk to you about her. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't like her too much. What happened there? What's going on? I oh, okay. Are you talking about where I got sucker punched? Is that what you're talking about? Oh, oh, pause this real quick. Uh, I, I already see it. <laughs> sucker punched. Oh, he, did, he, got, he, he got blasted. But it had nothing to do with me. We went over to Bonnie's, his, I don't remember what he called her, cousin, aunt, some shit. It's not, it's partner in crime. But she fucking, she stole my computer and like two of my phones, one of my phones, something like that. And Porter had stolen my Jeep, which I stole back from him because me and Kimmy, before she decided that we're enemies again, Drove around all fucking day looking for it. And just as we were about to give up, we see him at a gas station and she pulls up in there behind him, laying on the horn. He's like, shh, no, 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 no. I jump out the passenger side, jump in the passenger side of my Jeep, crawl over in the driver's seat. People are on their phones, like, calling the cops because it looks like we're robbing him and stealing his Jeep. And I told people, like, it's okay, like, he sold it for me, this is my Jeep, no need for cops. And I almost hit him on the way out of the driveway. I looked like a whole ass criminal 
stealing it from this whole ass criminal. Like his ego was bruised. In 2021, Ashley and I were already in oh, wait, communication no, because I'm trying to figure out. So I'm already done with him. He's in all credit of his mom's. He wants me to come and get him high. You want me to come an hour away? Dude, you stole my Jeep. You're a... No. Fuck you. So he said, oh, well, that's too bad. I know where your computer is. I said, really? That's how you're going to play this? So long story short, I go get his ass from Alcart, get him high, so he tells me where my computer is. We go into the trailer. He pulls off this whole big shit, like... Makes it scarier than it is. I'm sitting in the car. He says, pull up to the trailer. Send, I'm going to send the girl out with the computer. Turns out I knew the girl. We start talking. She goes back in. He never comes back out. So I'm like, fine, fuck you, bye. Left him there. And as soon as I pulled in at home, he calls me. And he's crying and freaking out. Saying, oh my God, come get me. It was a setup. Da, 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 da. Like, there's blood everywhere. So I go pick him up. And there's blood everywhere. He got blasted in the fucking face. And then less than 12 hours later, <laughs> the same girl got him in the same place and blasted him in the face again, breaking his palate. He was crying to everybody that he's in the hospital, he needs surgery, and it's because of me, because I didn't pay the girl, because I agreed to give her some shit for my computer. And the next day I texted her, I said, hey, Porter didn't get blasted in the face because of me, did he? Like, not paying you? And she goes, nope, I had nothing to do with you. Like, honestly, I don't know what the fuck that was about. I'm like, okay. Well, do you still want your stuff? Because, like, nobody came back out. That's why I didn't give anything. And she's like, yeah, that'd be cool. So I went over here, what I owed her, and we were good. But she said it had nothing to do with me. So, Porter, stop crying like a little bitch and tell the truth. What happened to Brittany? She claims to be Brittany's best friend, but she brings you into the picture in 2021, in October, where she mentions you looking for her for certain reasons that you feel maybe she had some sort of stake in or some sort of involvement with being the person that was supposed to be Kimberly Dyer and how you think she has the snitch list. Yeah, 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 I guess you, I guess you, I guess you, I guess you. When all that stuff came around, I guess you know, I guess you, I guess you, I guess you. When all that stuff came around, you know, all that happened, they found a book or whatever. I told the police this too, I was like, they found something. They're like trying to play her, but then yeah. after all that shit happened, I didn't know who Ashley was, and then I finally found out who Ashley was, and I was pissed off. I was like, what the fuck? I found out where she was, and I went and confronted her about it personally. And I said, you know, you're pretty fucked up and all that, and they had and all that to have that shit, and she said it was her. Yeah, it wasn't nothing to her, so I let it go. Well, she, cause she knows the same person I know, she knows the <laughs> he was a model. So we went over to his house, so I hung out and stuff like that, and then uh, she went over, uh, we went over to my aunt's house. She had his laptop stolen, right? She told me to go get the laptop, laptop back for her, so I did. Didn't tell him that. I he walk in there, tell me he had it. I get the laptop from the two girls, I walk up, I walk in the living room. He's like, who are you? I said, my reporter, and he started to punch me. Bloody my shit, like, and I go get surgery and stuff like that. Now, he was sneaking out a window. Told her, spread your fucking ass here. I just got my fucking shit busted up for no damn reason, you know what I mean? No, and so she came all the way back to me home. That's the only really interaction like, oh, and I stole a Jeep once too. I did do that. I remember that. But yeah, that's the only interaction that really happened to her, but she's, she's a really, like, you know, she's really manipulative. You know what I mean? You had reached out and wanted to make contact with Ashley originally because... Oh, I got excited and said, oh, I'm gonna sell, we're going to be so rich because I'm going to fucking sell you. In reference to, told me like a little bit after all that stuff, the shit happened. That it wasn't even her book. It was this uh, Ashley Marina or Marina girl that shaved half her head. That's the first time. So I started looking for it. And I was, hey, well, she's at my house. I was like, okay, well, I'm coming over. So I got, uh, I went to the house, and they had me. They were sitting there worried. I told them I ain't gonna do nothing look stupid like that, anyways. You know what I mean? See, I really don't know who spoke it was, but I was just trying to figure out where it came from because I heard she's that way. And I don't know what her connection to those two were at all, but then I figured out she knows those people. She was down there, too. She's the main reason why all that shit happened to me down there. 
Yeah, it's just one big bad fuck up shit that I don't even like to be around, you know. I'm gonna call you one of the, you want to have some information on that Ashley girl or whatever like that, but I try to stay far away from all that, all that I can, because I accusations get people in trouble. People here, man, these with this, they're all on that. They get some fictitious shit in their head and they would run with it. And then they go to this, 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 and this, and this, and that, you know what I mean? And it's sickening that all that's like that. And I feel bad for the, I feel bad for her mom, you know what I mean? That's why I, that's why I did what I did for Kimberly, for her mom and her kids and all that shit like that, you know what I mean? Because it's not right. An innocent person, no matter what, shouldn't be done that, that should be done too, you know? And I, me, I was tortured for three damn days, you know? Over this bullshit. Over weed and just fucking people being like that and that shit happened. Like, it really fucked up my life, man. But when that happened, I happily started using drugs. I just try to stay away from all that shit that I can't stay away from. You eventually are, are willing to go to even the lengths of retrieving a laptop for her, though. Yeah, because I felt bad because I got stolen at a house that where, you know, it's like, she's like my hand, you know, so I felt bad for her. And plus, she asked me to go get it. So I'm like, yeah, I'll go get it for you. That's fine. You know, she was paying me to do it. you better hope I don't find the backup of our text where you got a hold of me and told me that you know where my computer is. And it's in White Pigeon. And I said, okay, so it's at Bonnie's. And that's when you told me, don't assume shit. Okay. I had to come get you high so you'd stop holding the information hostage of where my computer was. Pray I don't find the backup that proves you're lying. She was paying you to do it? Yeah, she paid me to go get it. She's like, hey, I'll give you some money to go get the laptop on. Because I guess I had some really information on it or something like that. Ray, I and don't find it. It was expensive. It was like a, one of those Apple, Apple top laptops or something like that. So how much she pay you, if you don't mind me asking? About two bucks. You say 200 Yeah. Rewind it. You had nothing to do with Britney Sheik. I feel like he said 20 and then paused. No, he said 200 Oh, did he? I didn't have, yeah. I didn't have $200. <laughs> you are a and I know, a liar. I know you ain't got a MacBook Pro. No, I've never had an Apple. It's just appearance? No, sir. And there's no connection between the people involved with Kimberly Dyers. I know the people who, who were involved obviously got arrested. I, I'm aware. But there's no connection with those people in that household with Brittany Shane. You never heard any rumor, any story about it being connected from those people? No, Okay. I kind of paused for a second answering it real quick with that one. Okay. No. Did you catch that? What's that? He asked if those people had any involvement. He's like, no. No, I don't think so. Mm hmm And then he said no. Nope. Nope. So, do you have a comment? I just thought that was shady. It ruins my reputation and who, you know, I got close friends and they know who the fuck I am and it's like, you know what I mean? I always get the shit in. I have close friends and they know who the fuck I am. I would hope so if they're I, close friends. I, 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 the deal, the whole, all, every time, is because I'm, I'm like easy patsy for people and I, and I don't get real fucking sick of that shit. But I'm not dealt with that, you know, I've been clean, I've been in jail for the past six or about eight months now and I ain't going to deal with none of these people ever again. Obviously it's one big battery, you know what I mean? I was in solitary confinement, you know. I came to peace with myself. But I came to the fact that I need to just move on from it and to grow from the situation. And that's where I'm at now. I'm healthier for it and better in my mind and this, I'm better, you know. We're leaning towards Porter having no involvement in Brittany's disappearance. But now that you know what we know, we're leaving it up to you to decide where Porter sits on your own suspect board. Extensive work on Donald Hill's property. We did the GPR that was anomalies, some research to trying to get a hold of his testimony. They polygraph. The next day, Cohen follow the officer to once at the house when he looked before Brittany disappeared, plant when he was a trash, officers believe. Yes. Yeah, they have no background, really. No idea about this. How did you know about it? all the rumors being surrounding you, that it was at your house? 
this is again they asked you why if you knew any information you said no but then he also says he researches it when did you do this research and when did you find out you were the center of the rumors and that it was at your house i don't know if he's saying all i know is it's my house like it's just my house i don't know what happened there or if, if he's saying this is Hill. you know I, all i know is it happened at my house that's it so i think that's a can, kind of confusing and i wish that they pressed him on that a little more but oh my god we just can't tie that to ashley so let's not talk about it anymore. right right kind of wonder what's going on with this house and the fires yeah yeah that's interesting right why is there a continuing effort and attempt to burn this house down and because the first attempt is what 10 or i'm sorry december 15th correct correct the second one is the 19th it was it was interesting to see their to explanation Sean, of his be third attempt. yeah but he's not even probably on the suspect board all right i'm just saying their their shit's inaccurate Savior. Misinformation. His, and his emotions. They say, uh, they give a kind of a detail of what his emotions and, and body language is like while he's there. Share that with us. They know in the report, um, throughout the beginning of the interview, Hill could not sit still, was visibly nervous and twitchy, and constantly shifting weight and moving. Later in the interview, as more details were brought up and officers began to ask harder questions, Hill's behavior changed. He was able to sit still, was calmer, and the behavior change occurred when officers mentioned to Hill that blood and female underwear were located in his Michigan house basement. The conversation regarding possible DNA evidence and possible suspects further revealed a similar defeated behavior from Hill. So, in all fairness, I had asked you this question. I said, if you had been called in, and they said, there's this girl who's missing, we need to talk to you about this, and you get brought into the interview room, and you got two officers sitting there questioning you, are you going to be nervous? Yeah, of course. Regardless of, of and if you're nervous, then your body language is not acting normal. Yeah, then. I'd be nervous. More than likely, you're responding to it. So, would you be nervous? I think that's fair. Yeah, I mean, we're not talking about, did you steal a 10 cent piece of candy? We're talking about, you know. Do you get the sense that I do that they're trying to normalize Don Hill's behavior? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, we think this is all good and dandy because Ashley's still our girl. <laughs> yep. Never mind. The stairs that had floorboards ripped up. So, like, if you're running out of the basement, I'm you're not like, running out of the basement. We're not. The, we're about halfway through this. We're at 53 minutes on our video. There, the, yeah. the dirty mattress. In We've got to figure out how to wrap up 30. There minutes is no of, wrapping it up. Like this is a. No, I'm saying we got to wrap 45 minutes of this into like 13 minutes of this right now. Why? Because we're running on our video limit time. Then we'll do a part two. So. If that's what it takes, I'm not going to skip any of Would you be nervous? Yeah, I mean, the truth about it. knowing his background, too, and him saying all sorts of shit was going on at my house, and I would be nervous because I'm trying to figure out, am I, am I about, you know, did something actually go down? Am I being set up? Am I involved? And now they're catching on. Like, there's all sorts of things that he could be thinking about in this moment. But innocent position, yeah, yeah, this isn't normal for me. Going down to the police station, getting questioned about a missing person, it's not normal. So, of course, my emotions, it's like people get pulled over. I mean, it's just not normal, and you know that you're dealing with law enforcement. I think it's natural human reaction. Oh, but not mine. As he continues, it's interesting that they mentioned the female underwear. Yeah. And DNA, possible DNA, and he, they say he shows similar signs of, of that defeated behavior. Mm -hmm. You know, what's his mental mentality now? Is he thinking shit I'm about to be set up? Is he thinking shit they found it? Is he, I'm in trouble? Like what, you know, what is it? I mean, I think there's, there's so many possibilities there. And you know, you're thinking, well, this was my house. You know, I did have women there. 
who knows whose underwear it could be. Could my DNA be on it? Sure, I don't know, you know? I mean, adults engage in adult activities, so could that be possible? Sure, I mean, that would make me nervous. I know that you can answer a lot of these questions though, and we can eliminate a lot of these theories or, or mm-hmm. is when did you actually leave? Mm-hmm. When did you move? Yeah. Knowing when he moved can help us establish the direction we wanted to go with his behavior here. Absolutely. While they're at this interview with Donald, with Donald, they let him know that they have some screenshots and ultimately, ultimately, this is what St. Joe County provides to the Wyoming law enforcement assisting. And this is what they want to use to interview him. You know, we don't actually see the identity, but we have a really good idea on who this individual is. And we're going to leave it at that. But this is what they provide to Wyoming to use. So they took this person's testimony seriously. It's important. I think it was it was important for them to word this the way that they did it at the end of the interview interview when they were closing it up because one of the requests St. Joe does make is that they request the polygraph. At the end of the interview, Donald was emotional and got up to walk out, throwing his water bottle in the trash. I think they're they're explaining that this isn't probably the time to ask, maybe, because there's follow up to this, and what do you know? Donald disappears again. Tell us about what happens next. So in June, three months later, June 5th, Wyoming law enforcement reaches out to Michigan law enforcement to follow up. And what they tell Michigan is that they have made several attempts to locate Don to reach him, and it has been fully unsuccessful. He uh, seems to have left the area. Since we started investigating, we've been trying to find Donald Hill for quite a while. Until recently. On December 15th, 2022, Don finally sent me a message via Facebook. I bet he did. You're a faggot. I never did nothing. To nobody. I never even met that girl. And the night, whatever happened, I was working at the nuclear plant on Michigan Lake. Oh my god, I used to live by that. I guess this means we can add Don Hill to the big mad list. Thanks for making contact, Don. I find that very funny because people from Michigan don't call it Michigan Lake. No, it's, it's Lake Michigan. Yeah. Just saying. And that is uh, from White Pigeon area, Lake Michigan's about an hour drive. Hour and a half, because I uh, lived, I worked in Benton Harbor, so when I moved back to service, and it's, yeah. it's right there. Hour and a half, good day. But the Michigan Lake thing catches me. Yeah. I don't know anyone that ever has called it Michigan Lake. Especially anybody that's from around that's here. That's what I'm saying. It's always Lake Michigan. It's even taught in school that way. Mm-hmm. East Coaster we're, we're, might call it that. We're, we're or or I mean, West Coaster. West Coaster. <laughs> but, I mean, we're proud of our Great Lakes. Mm-hmm. That is Homes. the biggest of the Great Lakes. From one father to another, I imagine you'd do anything for your kids. So I hope you can understand and respect how this is affecting Brittany's family. Brittany's case is still open, Don. There's still time to sit down with your local law enforcement to take that polygraph. Or reach out to your former employer and make an attempt to get your employment After records. After seeing how my polygraph went, why would anyone agree to one with him? Yeah, you need to go <laughs> to direct law enforcement for that kind of stuff. And so you were at the nuclear plant the night Brittany went missing, right? The choice is yours. In the last episode, we discussed how Ashley sent the former sheriff a photo of Jeffrey K. and asked that he have one of his deputies take the photo to Brittany's grandma to see if she can identify him as the guy that was with Brittany the night of November 30th. The former sheriff does this, and eventually, grandma is shown a picture of Jeffrey. She says, she feels certain this is the person that was with Brittany. 
we know that Ashley provides a picture to Sheriff Bolt, and she tells us early on that the individual that she de- describes or she the picture that she shares is of Jeffrey, somebody who was a runner for her. And by runner, I mean delivering drugs. And she says this the description that Grandma gives Eric, and she relays, that Eric relays to her, reminds her of Jeffrey, they send the picture. Grandma looks at that picture. She gives a positive ID. She says she feels certain this is the person that was with Brittany on the night of the 30th. Oh, that's a long pause. They really want to add that for effect in there, don't they? Um, the suspense is killing me. Jeffrey. Yeah. So, from what I've gathered, you didn't really have runners. You had people that come over because you would have access. And it helped you lower your cost of using. So, just like Pocket would no, take it was, out and do something more. No, Jeffrey was, Jeffrey Jeffrey was my runner. Like, okay. Um, I didn't. I didn't sell. Okay. I had two, three little tops. Uh-huh. What they did with it is what they did with it. Okay, but Jeffrey would go buy it for you and pick it up and bring it back to you, or no. is that what the runner is? Or no, I had. He had people that need, needed shit, wanted shit. Okay, so he just knew you had extra, and he would. You were one of his people that he would get it from, and then go to correct. And then he can sell to whatever. Yeah. Okay. I'm not tr- allegedly. Allegedly. Yeah. I'm not trying to incriminate myself anymore. <laughs> I immediately wanted to know, okay, what's what's Jeffrey's statue? Does he fit the description other than the look on the face? I mean, I'm, Jeffrey has a statue. Does he fit this the, the the body description of Mystery Man? From what I understand. His stature fits the description that was given, you know, the first description that was given very early on. And that's, you know, 5'6 to 5'8, thin build, blonde hair. At that time, what I see is very light brown hair. If I were to look at Jeffrey and Sheldon, there appears to be a drastic difference then. Not similar at all. Grandma's saying this is the guy she thinks who was with Brittany. So law enforcement gets a a positive ID on this individual who Grandma says was with Brittany the night she was missing, mystery man. Let's jump into Jeffrey's testimony with law enforcement. Okay. So on 12-13 of 2018, the detectives are looking to track down Jeffrey Kiesling, and they go to the travel inn in Indiana and they attempt to figure out if he's staying there or not. And when they ask the desk, the front desk, uh, if... Okay, we're going to have to stop this video here. This is part one. We're going to do a part two tomorrow. No. And then, yeah, because I have to get up. We both do. We're going to have to do part two no, tomorrow. This is going to take about 20 hours to upload. Like, no, we're not going to stop in the, halfway in the middle of it. All right. 